The Industrial Revolution in America led to extended leisure hours and was lucrative for the population. This resulted in Americans having more time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the movies. When personally talking with Nick Clooney, the host of American Movie Classics, the father of George Clooney, and a Cincinnati anchorman, he said, Color film is what we have been working toward since the invention of film. The very first exploration of how to color films was a very thorough process called hand tinting. It required people to paint the film strip frame by frame. One of the first hand colored films was made in 1895 at Thomas Edison Studio called Annabelle Serpentine Dance. Unfortunately, as moving pictures got more popular and became longer, hand coloring became much more impractical. Then came along Charles Pathé, who turned the physical coloring process into a much easier machine using stencils and saturated velvet ribbon. The film strip was lined up with a specific stencil, isolating one area. The velvet strip passed over, dyeing only that area one color. Then, the film was placed under another machine set up for a different isolated area with a different color. Pathé called this process Pathé Color. When films became even more popular, stencils could not meet the desire for beautiful color in movies. So the tinting and toning process was introduced. Tinting was when a film was placed into a bath of color, dyeing the entire frame one single color. Some directors used tinting as a way to express the emotion in a scene. Others simply tinted film strips at random. On the other hand, toning is when the black, white, and silver in an image are changed using metallic elements to commonly brown red or other colors. Tinting and toning continued as being the major way to color film during the silent era, but the arrival of sound caused issues. The sound waves were printed on the sides of the film, which caused the light and color from tinting and toning to interfere with the sound. Though color had been incorporated artificially through paints and dyes, the world's first motion picture system that captured colors naturally was a three-color process patented in 1899 by Edward Raymond Turner and Frederick Marshall Lee. The machine had a rotating wheel with red, green, and blue sectors positioned on the camera, which was then played back through a projector with a similar three-lens wheel. When Turner died of a heart attack in 1903, the system was passed over to Charles Urban, who later passed development work to George Albert Smith. Together, Urban and Smith created the Natural Color Kinematograph Company. George Smith kept working with the three-color system and later decided to drop the color blue. He and Urban patented the new red-green system in 1906, calling it Kinema Color. The camera shot alternate frames through red and green filters. Then the footage was played back through a projector with the same red-green filters. This caused Kinema Color to be unable to produce the color blue. Aside from that, the first big hit from Kinema Color was the Great Coronation of Delhi Durbar in 1911. The success of Kinema Color created a jealous rival in William Freeze Green, who was a creator of a similar two-color system called BioColor. William decided to sue Urban and Smith because of their invalid patent. The patent's claims were too wide. George Smith had put that his invention would create all natural colors, but he could not produce the color blue. Therefore, the judge revoked Urban's patent, and that was the end of Kinema Color. Out with Kinema Color and in with a new two-color subtractive system called Technicolor. This process, patented in 1922, utilized a beam splitter, which split the light onto two black and white frames. The two frames were often dyed magenta and cyan, which when put together resulted in a final color image. One of the main benefits of Technicolor was that the films did not need to be played back in any type of special projector. The first major film using Technicolor two-strip process was created in 1922 called The Toll of the Sea. In 1927, 60 million Americans visited the cinema per week. This led to a boom in the film industry and pushed directors and inventors to improve the natural and artificial color processes over the course of many years. Technicolor decided to improve their process with a step called imbibition in 1928. Imbibition is the transferring of a film onto another film strip with a glossy finish. 
This gave films a beautiful look that was unique to Technicolor films. Once Technicolor films became less and less popular, Technicolor needed to figure something out to put their process back on the market. So, Technicolor created a three-strip process. The camera used a beam splitter, again, and three separate film strips. All of the red light was sent to one strip, all of the green light was sent to a second strip, and all of the blue light was sent to a third strip. This left three strips with somewhat different exposures in black and white. Then, the three strips were tinted their complementary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Lastly, the three strips were cemented together to form a naturally colorful film. The three-strip process was the most clear and most colorful film system so far, but Technicolor went to extreme limits to make sure they could get the most money out of everything. One single Technicolor camera could cost up to $30,000. Also, to be able to create a Technicolor film, people would be required to use a Technicolor cameraman, use Technicolor makeup, and the film had to be printed and processed by Technicolor. Since Hollywood majors didn't quite jump at the idea of using such an expensive process, Technicolor offered the Technicolor process to a smaller company. Walt Disney presents... The Wonderful World of Color. And now your host, Walt Disney. Walt Disney encountered much success while using the Technicolor process. Walt Disney's Flowers and Trees, The Three Little Pigs, and The Tortoise and the Hare won Academy Awards for Best Animated Cartoons. Though some longer big studio productions like Robin Hood are more well known, the first live action movie filmed with the Technicolor three strip system was a short film called La Cucaracha. This film went on to win the Academy Award for Best Live Action. Some of the most vibrant and rich color was displayed in Victor Fleming's The Wizard of Oz. This is one of the most widely known films for the vivid color produced using the Technicolor three strip process. It was also nominated for six Academy Awards, one of which was the Best Color Cinematography. In 1941, Technicolor kept improving. They introduced the Monopack. This was a three-layer film strip, which was the three-strip process, but compacted into one strip of film. A movie using Monopack was Lassie Come Home, made in 1943. In 1936, Germany produced Agfa Color, a single strip, three-layer film, similar to the Monopack. This process was used in Germany for propaganda but it wasn't until after World War II when the Agfacolor process was released around the world. Releasing this process gave inventors the perfect chance to improve, and it was Eastman Color that really refined the process. In 1950, Eastman Color became one of the first extremely popular tripack camera film processes. Eastman solved mostly all of the problems seen in the past. It exchanged a colorful look for less money, it didn't require specific lighting, and it could be used in any type of standard film camera. After Eastman Color, the film industry continued to explore different methods of capturing natural color in movies. Then, in 1995, Toy Story was released, becoming the first completely computer-generated feature film. This led to the first widely successful digital film, Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, in 1999. Then came many more, including The Matrix and Bicentennial Man, also all released in 1999 in the new digital cinema format. Then, in 2000, more films began being filmed digitally, some of which included Mission to Mars and Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones. Digital film went on to become the standard way to capture color in the movies today. Through encountering new ideas, years of exploration, and humans' dramatic, sympathetic, and sensorial exchange of emotions with movies, color film has become one of the most beautiful inventions in the world.